Hey, so we are on the Mayan Popovo. Okay, this is gonna be excellent. We're really getting into deep into it, and I, I really like it. And then they sang, they played, they drummed. When they took up their flutes and drums, their grandmother sat down with them. Then they played. They sounded out the tune and the song that got its name then Huanapu Monkey is the name of the tune. And then one monkey and one artisan came back dancing when they arrived. Remember we have to keep the characters names intact. We have to remember them. And then when the grandmother looked, it was their ugly faces the grandmother saw. Then she laughed. The grandmother could not hold back her laughter. So then, so, no, no, it says, so they just left right away, out of her sight again. They went up and away in the forest. Why are you doing that, our dear grandmother? We'll only try four times. Only three times are left. We'll call them with the flute, with song. Please hold back your laughter. We'll try again, said Juanapu and Sipalanke. Next, they played again. Then they came back dancing again. They arrived again in the middle of the patio of the house. As before, what they did was delightful. As before, they tempted their grandmother to laugh. Their grandmother laughed at them soon enough. The monkey looked truly ridiculous, with the skinny little things below their bellies and their tails wiggling in front of their breasts. When they came back, the grandmother had to laugh at them, and they went back into the mountain. <laughs> Please, why are you doing that, our dear grandmother? Even so, we'll try a third time now, said Juanapu and Zipalanke. Again they played, again they came dancing, but the grandmother held back her laughter. Then they climbed up here, cutting right across the building with thin red lips, with faces blank, puckering their lips, wiping their mouths and faces, suddenly scratching themselves, and when the grandmother saw them again, the grandmother burst out laughing again. And again they went out of sight because of the grandmother's laughter. <laughs> it has a little picture look. <laughs> That's the hieroglyph. Even so, our dear grandmother will get their attention. So for, so for the fourth time, they called on the flute. But they didn't come back again. The fourth time, they went straight into the forest. So they told their grandmother... Well, we've tried, our dear grandmother. They came at first, and we've tried calling them again, so don't be sad. We're here. We, your grandchildren, just love our mother, dear grandmother. Our elder brothers will be remembered. So be it. They have lived here and have been named. They are to be called one monkey and one artisan, said Juanapu and Zipalanke. So remember, <laughs> Juan. One monkey and one artisan were more kind of loved by the grandmother than Juanapu and Zipalanque. And Juanapu and Zipalanque, remember, they turned, uh, they had one monkey and one artisan climb the tree. And then remember, they tied their pants around their waist and got transformed into monkeys. <laughs> so, the, uh, so they were uh, prayed to by the flautists and singers among the ancient people. And the writers and carvers prayed to them. In ancient times, they turned into animals. They became monkeys because they just magnified themselves. Interesting. So, they got turned into monkeys because they just magnified themselves. They abused their younger brothers just as they wished them to be slaves. So, they themselves were brought low. That's like the moral of the story, right? One monkey and one artisan were lost then. They became animals, and this is now their place forever. Even so, they were flautists and singers. They did great things while they lived with their grandmother and mother. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's crazy. Uh, so, think about it. Like, the grandma, she was like overly favored. And like, remember, she let one artisan and one monkey eat Juanapu and Zipalanque's food. Remember, they'd come back and there wouldn't be any food for them. And the grandma saw that the older brothers were eating it. And remember, she denied that Juanapu and Zipalanque were uh, going to be her grandchildren. But remember, their mother, Blood Moon, she proved it. So it's like, wow, this, this grandmother figure, 
which is very interesting if you think about it because she keeps laughing when her sons come in you know they look like monkeys right but it's just fascinating how the grandmother could have done her role to facilitate peace between the siblings but she didn't because of that it caused a rivalry which led to animal transformation of the other ones and here it has the uh, the the imagery they give us of the monkey right one who only magnifies themselves i think about how certain monkeys list or let's just say and a gorilla ape or whatever he's like Ooh, like he's letting you know hey i'm the head honcho i'm the head silverback even though he protects the group he still is a little arrogant, right? Depending on which ape, monkey, primate, whatever you want to pick on. Uh, it's interesting how they use the, you know, because they became monkeys because they only thought magnify themselves and they abused their siblings. And uh, monkeys uh, do kind of smack each other and they're kind of mischievous, right? They see another monkey eating an orange, they'll go up and take it, you know. Sadly, uh, chimps, I believe, they will kill a rival chimp's... Uh, babies uh they'll eat them the male chimps will eat them and rip off their arms and stuff so i'm not sure at this particular time period which primates were most prevalent at that time it has a monkey obviously it has a tail because of the hieroglyph right so it says here it could be a spider monkey hmm so I'm not sure if spider monkeys are as mischievous and bombastic as baboons, gorillas, and chimps. But uh, they are pretty intelligent. I believe some people have them as pets. So <laughs> not only did they get turned into a, a primate, but they got turned into a small one. <laughs> oh, that's funny. What do you think, family? <laughs>